So you want to learn programming, and you've heard some good things about the Odin project. But amidst all of the industry-wide layoffs and with the risk of AI replacing us, you're wondering if the Odin project is still worth it in 2024. In short, yes and no. Here's why. Starting with the cons. Web development is very saturated, especially at the entry level. This is because everyone wanted to become a software engineer due to the high pay and chill working conditions. And what do all of the influencers and bootcamps tell you to start with? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Which is understandable because all you need is a text editor and a browser to see quick results. No need for a compiler or an object-oriented language, you can build stuff very fast using vanilla JS. This led to an influx of bootcampers and self-taught developers with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as their main skills. Web development and frontend in particular got very saturated quickly. I know that demand for good, experienced, full-stack engineers is still very high. But at the entry level, it's another reality. Because everyone and their mom knows or is currently learning JavaScript. That is reflected in the Stack Overflow developer survey, where, as you can guess, the majority of people are learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The fact is, the Odin project became quite popular for beginners wanting to learn to code, which means that a lot of developers might have the exact same experiences and projects as you, increasing the competition. Fortunately, there is a solution. It is to use the Odin project as a guiding path and not relying on it 100%. For example, you can use it to learn the different concepts that there is in programming, but then you can apply those concepts in your own projects instead of building the projects that Odin proposes. In this market, this is exactly what you need, an X factor, something that differentiates you from the masses. Quite honestly, building another to-do list or a weather app is not going to land you a job. So what can you do? Well, you can pivot in a completely different direction and focus on a specific programming area which might have a bit less demand but a lot less competition. Think about what you're interested in building. If you want to build embedded systems, go with C or C++, or even Rust actually, since it's a growing language and it's loved by many. If you want to stay within the realm of building applications, you can look at enterprise software, which is mostly built using Java or C Sharp. Of course, with Java, you might have competition from all of the computer science graduates, who are mostly learning it at school. So I don't really recommend going down this path unless you really want to learn Java for some reason. On the other hand, a lot of people have told me that they loved working with C-Sharp, as it's a clean language that has a very nice ecosystem. C-Sharp is widely used in the industry. There are a lot of jobs available and a lot less competition, especially when comparing it to web development. But honestly, web development still offers the most job opportunities, as there are full stack, front end, and back end software engineers. And building web apps is just fun. If you want to succeed as a web developer, you have to choose the right path. Now, you might be wondering what the hell is this guy talking about? Well, the Odin project has two distinct tracks JavaScript and Ruby on Rails. Most people will choose the JavaScript path without even thinking about it, because that's where all the jobs are at, right? Yeah, that's true. JavaScript is indeed the most in demand language in the world but it also has the most competition. The times of learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and landing a job in six months are over. Nowadays, you might have to learn TypeScript, React, Next.js, and so much more to stay relevant in the field. You cannot just be average and expect to land a job. In this market, you have to be exceptional. Honestly, most people just look at the length of the two paths and choose the shortest one, which is JavaScript. It has six courses compared to Ruby's eight. Unfortunately, that is the mentality of most beginner programmers. They think that they can learn everything that there is to know in a few months and land a job easily. Unfortunately, landing a job might not take months, but years. So I suggest you listen to what I have to say about the second path in the Odin project, which is Ruby on Rails. I know what you're gonna say. Ruby is dead. But I did my research. Looking at job listings on Indeed for software engineers in the United States, there are around 20,000 job openings for JavaScript and 2,000 for Ruby. Ruby is definitely not dead, especially considering that huge companies like Shopify and GitHub were built using it. Ruby is a very fun language to learn, and startups absolutely love using Rails, because it allows them to iterate very quickly and to build MVPs very fast. So Ruby has 10% of the total job openings of JavaScript. But how many people are currently learning it? Well. 
According to the Stack Overflow developer survey, 60% of responders said that they were learning JavaScript, while only 2.5% are learning Ruby. Of course, I know this is a single source of information, and you should probably check out your local markets to validate if it's the same. But if it is, it means that there is a huge gap in the market for Ruby developers, because there's a decent amount of demand and a relatively low supply. And it shows. The Stack Overflow developer survey mentions that Ruby devs are amongst the highest paid in the industry, with an average salary of 98,000 compared to 74,000 for JavaScript. As a Ruby dev, it will be easier to stand out in the sea of JavaScript developers, and it might also lead to opportunities with other programming languages, because employers will see that you are very adaptable. So, looking at the two paths in the Odin project. The Ruby path has everything that JavaScript has, except the Node.js course, because we're obviously going to be using Ruby on Rails for the backend. That means you will learn Ruby, Ruby on Rails, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and even React in their newly updated course. Furthermore, the Ruby path will teach you to learn SQL using Postgres as the database of choice, which is a lot more useful to learn than MongoDB, the database that they're using in the JavaScript path. Yes, I know, the Ruby path will take longer to finish. That's without a doubt. But I honestly think that it will make you a better developer and help you stand out in this crowded software engineering market. So going back to our original question, is the Odin project still worth it in 2024? If you want to go in another field like embedded systems, game dev, or AI, the Odin project is clearly not for you. And that's totally okay. But if you're dead set on web development, and you want to have the capability of building any web application that you have in mind, the Odin project is, without a doubt, the best resource on the internet to learn web development. It's a project-based curriculum and it has a great community on Discord, if you ever have questions to ask. So I give you my opinion on the best path to choose within the Odin project for 2024. But now I want to hear yours in the comments below. Which path are you going to choose? JavaScript or Ruby on Rails? Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.